Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I have four Ryokas in front of me. Two uh, labelled Kriantha, one labelled Reserva, and one just labelled Ryoka. Um, and I've put it between the Kriantha and, Ryoka, and then the Reserva. Is that the right place for it? Only one way to find out. Taste! Um, first one I have is the um, uh, first three are all, all 2008, last one's 2007. Uh, but the first one is Baronia 2008 Rioja uh, Criantha, and it's got on here Dos Maderas, uh, which means two oaks. Uh, it's been aged partly in French oak and partly in American oak. <clears throat> Well, I don't know about the source of the oak, but what I notice is the newness and the rawness of the oak. It's giving this slightly sawdusty character uh, to the wine, and uh, rather than some of the soft roundness that... Uh, uh, it, it almost seems like it doesn't quite know whether it wants to be uh, elegant style of Rioja or traditional style of Rioja, and it falls almost in a dip between the two. Uh, the fruit flavours seem okay. There's a bit of that um, raspberry, uh, orange peel, and uh, maybe a bit of strawberry too. But, um, yeah, the oak just a bit clunky at the moment. It has the Rioja freshness and bounce, uh, but maybe lacks that, um, that vanilla sheen. Uh, yeah, it, it feels like a, a wine who's, uh, yeah, it doesn't quite, yeah, it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's okay, um, and there's a bit of spice. Uh, decent, decent enough, but um, not great. Uh, let's see how we, whether we're on greatness with the number two. Ibericos Criantha uh, Tempranillo from uh, Torres. Same vintage. And I'm not sure of the source of the wood for here, uh, but um, stick my nose in there. And it feels like a rounder, richer, more confident wine. Yes, there's a little bit of softness and smoothness there, uh, but there's also a bit of, a bit of meatiness in there. Um, and it uh, feels like it's going to be quite an energetic, vibrant, but... Um, hesitate to use the word manly, but... Um, a bit rustic uh, in the best sense of the word. Uh, it, it's got, it's, it feels like it's got a lot going on, bit of power, but it's got the refreshing side as well. Yeah, really nice fruit. It's got this a bit of a bit of licorice there, uh, some plum, and then the berry and um, a tinge with that just a little bit of orange peel. Uh, but what I also notice is, um, whereas the first one I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen to it, uh, whether I would be bo could be bothered to keep it. Here, uh, there's a backbone of tannin that. Um, that uh, makes me think uh, keeping it for another year or two, possibly even longer, uh, would be justified. And uh, there's a warmth on the finish, but it's not an alcohol-derived de uh, warmth. It's a warm, dusty Spanish character. And, um, yeah, I, um, I do like that. Oh, golly, the sun's come out here, um, which, of course, is no bad thing. Let's see whether the sun shines on wine number three. This is the one that just says Rioja. And it's from Artadi. And it's uh, Vinyas de Gain. Now this feels like a different beast. This feels like um, a Rioja made for the Americans, if I want to put it that way. Um, it feels like that there's a, a ju really big, juicy, rich, plummy character here. Um, it, it, the, in terms of ripeness, um, the previous two were ripe but not overripe. Here, you're almost pushing the boundaries. There's a, there's a juicy, very ripe berries, and it's blackberries rather than the red berries. And that, that uh, uh, and of the plums, it's on the uh, yeah the dark plums, the damsons rather than the uh, rather than the maybe the, uh, um, the, the no bother the Victoria plum end end of the spectrum. Um, oak, it's there, but it's adding plushness, um, a little bit of volatility, uh, but uh, yes, it's, a, it's it's quite a different style from the Taurus. It's a fascinating contrast. I really am in two minds about that. Um, because I get this uh, this vanilla, I, I can see a lot of wine making artifice going on here. I can feel concentration of fruit, but it also feels like that fruit has been over ripened. So you're getting a bit of that um, what I call the, well the Australians have the, the word dead fruit, the dead grape character, where it, it, the, the the fruit has just started to desiccate slightly. Um, so it dries out the juiciness, uh, and you're left with the power, but maybe not the delicacy. It's good, and it's concentrated, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it open up over the course of a few hours. Uh, but at the moment, it feels uh, that it's just trying that little bit too hard to impress. And uh, whereas the Taurus is just um, laid back and confident and uh, happy to be what it is, this feels to be uh, trying to overachieve and maybe missing it. And it does, does have some nice herby characters in there. It's also a bit of juniper um, and uh, a touch of the orange peel. I'll be fascinated to see how that how that changes because um, um, at the moment it feels like it's just trying to bash you around the head and impress you rather than uh, caress you. And I've got to a stage in life where I'd rather be caressed than bashed. 
Let's see whether the final wine is a Caressa or a Bacha. It's the Cunet uh, Reserva 2007. And we're back to the uh, juicy, plusher, uh, more mellow, vanilla-tinged traditional style here. And um, I, 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 like, I, like, I like good wines in both styles. I, I like the ones where it's up front and fruity and uh, propped up by, uh, uh, by modern new oak. Uh, and I like the old-fashioned style. And what I find with the new style that is does seem over-ripe and over-oaky to start with, uh, give them a bit of time and they do calm down. But what I also find is, is with wines like this, where you think, oh, it's over over aged, it's over mellow, and maybe it's got a little bit of that Britannomyces, and it's going to dry out with time. Um, they're still good. They're still looking. They're, they're looking remarkably similar at 10, 15 years of old. Uh, 15 years of old. 15 years of age. Uh, and so um, I like the smell of this, and um, so I better taste it. And it's looking good. Not great, but good. Uh, still got the roundness, juiciness, freshness, um, and that little bit of meatiness. The red berries, the citrus elements, um, and uh, fresh. Um, it's funny that the the, um, the Torres uh, uh, has had less. Uh, actually, they probably had about the same time in barrel. Uh, the Torres for me feels like a more of a long term prospect than than this. But um, again, as I said, these wines do surprise you. They um, uh, they, because they've got that acidity, uh, they, 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 they creep up on you and you think, right, okay, it's, it's at its peak, it's at its peak. Then you try them five years later and they're still going strong. Um, the ones I think that will be going strong uh, in, in another five years, uh, I think that and the Torres, the Artadi, I'm really, I, I really, I, I have no idea. Um, it, it is this bigger, fuller style and um, I've put my money on, on, on those styles of wine in the past. And I've been slightly disappointed, but I've also uh, been aware of uh, the modern style of Rioja where there's ripe fruit and there's a lot of new oak. And uh, you think, oh, is this Rioja? And then you taste them when they're 10, 15 years old and they're glorious and they're most definitely Rioja. Um, but I'm not sure which camp this falls into. So all I can do is try it again later on tonight and uh, report back. See you soon.